Greetings and welcome back to another episode in our series of 1,000 Evidences for the LDS Church. In this one, we'll look at the vast amount of evidence which clearly demonstrates that Jesus Christ visited the ancient Americas. We all know how history records of the visit of Cortez to the Aztecs of Mexico and how they worshipped him as a returning god, uh, Quetzalcoatl. The literal meaning of the word Quetzalcoatl is feathered serpent. The Quetzal bird had a long tail of three or more feet, which gave it the appearance of a serpent, a flying serpent. The Book of Mormon teaches that Jesus Christ was represented by a serpent. Um, that's in um, Alma chapter 33, verse 19. Where, where it refers to the days of Moses. It says, did Moses not bear record that the Son of God should come and that he lifted up the brazen serpent in the wilderness? Even so shall he be lifted up who should come. And as many as should look upon that serpent should live. Even so as many as sh should look upon the Son of God with faith, having a contrite spirit, might live even uh, unto that life which is eternal. Helaman chapter 8, verse 14 through 15. Critics of the Book of Mormon hastily re reject the idea that Quetzalcoatl may have been Jesus Christ because they say the Aztec deity was pagan. They claim, they claim that Quetzalcoatl links the ancient American god with Satan, the serpent in Eden. It's uh, talked about in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, uh, and uh, 13, verses 13 through 14. However, the possibility that a serpent could have represented Christ has a clear biblical precedent. In the Old Testament times, Jehovah commanded Moses to fashion a brazen serpent, attach it to the end of a pole, and raise it up so that the sick and afflicted of his camp could look upon it and be healed. That's in Numbers chapter 21, verse 9. Jesus compared himself with Moses, his uh, serpent, by saying that just as the serpent was lifted up to heal the sickness, the Son of Man would be lifted up to heal believers of their sins. That's in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Similarly, um, ancient Jewish Zohar portrays the Lord as a serpent. Um, as there is a serpent below, which is still at work in the world, so there is a serpent above, which watches over all mankind in all, uh, in all the roads and pathways, and also restrains the power of the impure serpent. Um, that's in A.E. Wall Wait, um, Secret Doctrine in Israel, page 87. Many unbiased non-LDS scholars and historians have noted the striking similarities between Quetzalcoatl and Jesus Christ. The historian Herbert H. Bancroft concluded that Quetzalcoatl's teachings, according to traditions, had much in common with those of Christ in the Old World. That's in Bancroft's Native Races of the Pacific States. San Francisco, 1883, volume 5, page 201. See also J. Eric uh, S. Thompson, Rise and Fall of the Maya, 1954, pages 259 through 260. Also, uh, William Prescott wrote, None of the deities of the country of Mexico suggest such astonished, astonishing analogies with scripture as does Quetzalcoatl. You can read about that in Prescott's uh, Conquest of Mexico, a modern library edition, page 694 uh, through uh, 698. Scholars have found that Quetzalcoatl was an actual ancient American character, not merely a figure of mythology. Miles Poindexter indicates that Quetzalcoatl was not borrowed from the Spanish missionaries because the Indian religions were more advanced than Spanish Catholicism. That's in Poindexter, the 
uh, A.R. Incas, New York, 1930. Page, uh, volume 1, page 175. Also in Paul Herman, Conquest by Man, New York, 1954, page 171 through 172. Also, D.G. Brinton, he wrote, We thus arrive, still in primitive conditions, to such personal ideals as Quetzalcoatl among the Aztecs of whom it was said in their legends that he was of majestic presence, chaste in life, adverse to war, wise and generous in actions, delighting in the cultivation of the arts of peace. A Catholic writer of the 16th century observed that so closely did Quetzalcoatl resemble the, the precepts of Jesus that nothing was lacking but his name and that of his father. Um, you can read about that in D.G. Brinton, Religions of Primitive Peoples, 1897, page 251. Uh, Nadalak writes of an ancient American tradition that a white man wearing a long beard had taught the inhabitants the art of building houses and sowing seed, after which he disappeared um, to live for 2,000 years in retreat before reappearing upon the earth. See uh, Jean-Francois Albert du Poget. Quetzalcoatl was the creator of life, according to Markman, the flayed god, 1992, um, and uh, page uh, 32, Goetz and Morley in uh, Popol Vuh, 1975, page 83. Quetzalcoatl had a long beard and the features of a white man, according to T.A. Willard, Kukulkan, the bearded conqueror, Los Angeles, Murray and Lee and G, 1941, page 159. Uh, Quetzalcoatl taught virtue. That's in Gallen Camp, The Riddle and Discovery of a Lost Civilization, Maya, 1987, page 166. Quetzalcoatl raised the dead to life again, made the lame to walk and the blind to see, according to five sources including Constant Irwin, Fair Gods and Stone Faces, New York, St. Martin's Press, 1963, pages 33 and 100. Um, there are many other sources we could read, uh, but suffice it to say for now, the, the, the Bearded Conqueror uh, is, talks about these things. Um, the title of the book is The Bearded Conqueror, Hollywood, California, 1941, and there's uh, several other sources uh, that we won't take time to read. Uh, Quetzalcoatl said he would return, according to five sources, including uh, Bernal Diaz, The Conquest of New Spain, translated by J. M. Cohen, London, Penguin, 1963, also many other sources we won't take time to read. Uh, it's amazing how, how much documentation there is. Um, there's, a, there's a ton of information available to the uh, seeker of truth, and more than enough to establish the fact that the Book of Mormon is true. There's also documentation that Quetzalcoatl ascended to heaven, where he is now with his father, uh, with another bunch of uh, documentation we could take time to, uh, we won't take time to read. Uh, <clears throat> all of this is amazing and remarkable. It doesn't take any stretch of imagination to see these many parallels to Jesus Christ. We could go on and on with more evidence of Christ's visit with the people living in the ancient Americas, but the evidence we have discussed should be more than enough to establish this fact. We have much more to discuss about other evidences in upcoming episodes. Don't miss any of them. 
They are solid, powerful, and convincing. Thanks for watching, and remember, call, don't fall. Call on the Lord who is easy to believe. Don't fall for the lies that are hard to believe.